what would an award ceremony, a, a latent chow event, a, a progressive forum be without a panel discussion? <laughs> right? So I tell you, we have, are you in for a treat today? Yeah. 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 It's like the old rock band is getting back together. Uh, please welcome to the stage for uh, our panel discussion, Jack's former Chiefs of Staff, Anne McGrath, Director of Canada's NDP, Bob Gallagher, and Jack's former Press Secretary and President of the Douglas Caldwell Layton Foundation, Monsieur Carl Belanger, to have a discussion about Jack's legacy. Thank you, Mike. Bonjour tout le monde, Carl Bélanger, donc, avec Anne McGrath et Bob Gallagher. Très content d'être avec vous aujourd'hui, en ce 22 août. Now, August 22nd is a very special day for me, because it is my wedding anniversary. Uh, <laughs> so I hope you realize how many points I'm burning to be with you today, <laughs> to commemorate this other very special day for all of us, of course, uh, with, with Jack's passing uh, uh, already 11 years ago. Um, as you heard, both Anne and Bob served as Chief of Staff for Jack Layton, which means that uh, they were both my boss at one point, but today I am in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's get started because I know uh, uh, we have a clock and a schedule to keep and we, we want to get through the agenda. Uh, but August 22nd, Anne, I'm going to start with you. Uh, what does that day represent for you? Uh, it represents an enormous loss. It's a day that I, I find hard every year. <clears throat> and uh, as you can tell, uh, I feel on the verge of tears all day on August 22nd. Um, it, was, uh, it was heartbreaking. It was devastating. It was, uh, uh, you know, it, it was like everything changed on that day. You know, we were, we had had such a, a, a successful, we were coming out of such a successful election. Uh, we had done so many great things. I feel like Jack was, he was poised in my view to be the next prime minister. Um, without his, you know, ever present love uh, every day, because uh, working with Jack meant that you experienced that love all the time. Bob, same question to you. Uh, what does August 22nd mean for you? Well, I mean, I agree with Anne that uh, there was much for Jack to do, and he would have done much more uh, uh, had he been able to. But I, I really focus on the time of celebrating his life and. Uh, Boy, do we have a lot to celebrate in his life. You know, he, he really changed politics in Canada. He inspired generations of people. Uh, but most importantly, he actually made real differences at the city level uh, and at the federal level. And so when I think of today, I think it's very important that we honor those who really made a difference in Canadian history so often it's not the progressives that get honored, uh, but it's very important because he was really quite an impressive, impressive changer. Well, so let me build on that. Uh, how did he change things? I mean, political leaders come and go, federal politicians come and go, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's been many for all the parties, uh, but what made Jack Layton so special that all these years after his past saying, we are still talking about his legacy and we're still celebrating it and there are awards and there's a foundation now for bearing his name like what made him so special uh, how did he make change well maybe i'll start with you and then well uh i i don't think you can put it into uh simple words uh but jack was someone who believed in inspiring providing a, a vision uh jack uh had this unique ability to think about what he was doing then and accomplishing what needed to be done right now, but using the vision of the future, a vision of how life could be otherwise to be able to make a difference. And I think people really, that resonates for people when, when you can actually talk about how we could be better, how our society could be better and how we can get there. And for someone to have the ability to have that kind of vision, 
but at the same time dedicate his life to actually getting things done in a practical way and accomplishing that uh, is really quite incredible. I think he had to work really hard to get Jack to write you off. Uh, he, he, <laughs> he just, you know, he did see the good in people, even, you know, to be honest, people that I didn't see a lot of good in. Uh, <laughs> but he was able to really bring out the best in people. And he was able to make you, I used to always joke that he always used to make me want to work harder and sleep less, um, uh, which is a big feat. But I, I felt so, uh, honored really to, to 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 work with him that I always wanted to do more sometimes more even than, than my capacity so I, I always found that he and and he was able to find uh, opportunity in in what looked like a, a miserable situation you know he would just uh, I would think something terrible had just happened and he would look at it and say what an opportunity and he would find a way to 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 kind of grasp victory from the jaws of defeat rather than yeah. the other way around, as we are often very good at doing. Yeah, he was not a guy that uh, spent too much time looking back, no. right? He was always looking for a way forward. Mm -hmm. and, and because of that, he was always looking for a way to discuss with his political opponents yes. and get things done, yes. right? Talk, talk to us about that a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that, that uh, you know, he, he was... Uh, you know, he was able to build bridges with people and find ways of getting them to do the things that he wanted them to do. Like, he, and and sometimes convincing them that it was his, that it was their idea. Uh, you know, like they still take credit for it to this day. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, they, they definitely do. So, I mean, I saw that many, many times. You know, where he would. I mean, I was in meetings with him with the prime minister of the time, Stephen Harper. And, uh, I think thought it was his idea, whether it was around uh, uh, reaching out to indigenous organizations or, you know, all sorts of things, you know, like uh, being more open to, uh, to unions during labor disputes, all of those sorts of things. You know, obviously you're working within the limits of who you're reaching out to. Uh, so it wasn't spectacular or anything, but he did get people to do things and make them think it was their idea. And often it was things that they wouldn't normally do. And he just, he just, he had so many ideas, uh, you know, sometimes too many. Um, but <laughs> he, yeah, totally. I mean, I do remember saying to him sometimes, you know, sometimes too many ideas can be as debilitating as none. But he just, uh, he just was overflowing with um, ideas, with drive, with uh, uh, ambition for progressive change. Now, you, you know, uh, like, I mean, just to, 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 to extend to that, I remember a time when Jack first met Stephen Harper as prime minister. He and I went to his office. It was a private meeting. <clears throat> Media didn't know about it. It was really the time to get to know each other. And he brought an eagle feather and he brought uh, Tim Flanagan's uh, Weathermakers, the book on, on climate change, which was not known at that point very well. And he talked about how you have to reconcile with indigenous people and you have to apologize. This is years before the apology was ever made. And he said, you need to read this book because your legacy needs to include climate change. And so, you know, he left the, he left the eagle feather and he had left the book for Stephen Harper, someone that he had disagreed on virtually every policy, but he saw that he could potentially get him to do some of those things. And in both the cases of, of, of the apology and climate change, he had an impact. Uh, and then he fought him on all those other policies that he totally disagreed with. Now, Bob, uh, we, we've been talking a lot uh, about his impact at the federal level. Uh, obviously, for most Canadians, that's how they knew him as leader of the federal NDP. But, but here in Toronto, he also had an impact at the municipal level, he was a city councillor for a long time, and you worked with him right. as a city councillor. Um, uh, how was he back then as a city councillor? You know, I think Jack loved municipal politics more than anything. Like municipal politics is where you actually get to work with people. You get. work on it and actually finish it in your lifetime you know and, and 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 that's what he liked doing whether it was deciding that he that toronto would be the first city ever to have a wind turbine built 
an urban wind turbine and doing it, he was able to, to, to kind of conceptualize that we would actually someday need this kind of power and to be able to work on it and actually get it built. You know, whether it was actually when the, when Mel Lastman was mayor uh, and he was going to destroy Tent City and kick out all these homeless folks, he and Olivia were able to go down and actually meet with them, talk with them, and then come back to Mel Lastman and say, we do this another way. We, because he valued those people and he knew that in a municipal level, you were able to like, be able to make that difference. And not only did his ability to get things done uh, uh, come out, it's also where he honed his, his oratory skills. You know, the city is one of those places where they meet regularly and everybody has their opinion about what is coming up. And he was able to persuade them and use municipal politics where he could have a different majority pulled together on every issue. So he never saw any issue as actually not being worth fighting for, and he would build that consensus. Now, let me stick with you, Bob, for a second, because you had the unique experience of working with Jack, both at the municipal level and at the federal level. What was different between Jack, the municipal politician, and Jack, the federal politician? Well, first of all, there was a lot that was the same. His, his, his beliefs and his belief system, his principle of social democracy and equity stayed just, anybody who knew him and anybody even came close to him knew that that stayed the same. But in fact, he changed quite a bit at the federal level. He really matured. He uh, realized that the, what he was dealing with was a larger pawn, a larger sense of change. And he started thinking even bigger. It was interesting that he introduced Bill C-377, which he himself wrote along with a, a few of us, which was the first time to introduce real climate change strategy. And this was eight years before the Paris Accord. So he was able to actually realize that I need to start thinking really big and introduce those kinds of things. And so he was a much more mature, a politician, he was a, a much better speaker. He was uh, somebody who could lead a large, a large organization, as it, as was the when he was in the opposition. You know, he was able to do that. But those principles, those principles of the social democracy, of fighting for those who are left out and left behind, that that's where your energy is, not in helping the corporate world have an environment to be able to thrive on. And that, those principles stayed with them. But yeah, he changed quite a bit. He, he also brought a lot of skills so that he had in the municipal to, to Because I, I know in committee work, for instance, he would, uh, I remember being in a, a meeting with um, the leader of the, the liberal opposition at the time, and we were trying to do something. And, and uh, the, the, I can't remember which leader it was. It was well, a few of them. It was Dion or Ignatieff or whoever it was. But he was sort of saying uh, on, the Afghan de on the Afghan detainee <laughs> issue, he was saying, well, this is how we'll do it. We'll go in there. It's the way that Olivia and I used to do it in City Hall. It's like, I move the motion. This person seconds it. Bing, bang, boom. It's done. You know? And I remember the Dion or Ignatieff was, was just sort of sitting there looking a bit befuddled because uh, he just like, we can, if we want to do it, we can do it. And so he knew how to move things through. You know, municipal politics is really minority government all the time. That's right. That's what my, that's what municipal politics. You've got to somehow f figure out how can you get fifty percent plus one of the votes of city council, and it may not be the same one. And that's what's why he was so well prepared when we finally went into minority governments. Yeah. Like he was able to use the power that he had to be able to make change by bringing people on and figuring out how to somehow put together a majority. Now, uh, Jack Layton was obviously a very skilled politician. You don't get to have the best results uh, in the history of the CCF and DP uh, without being one. And so he knew issues that worked. He knew issues that, that work with people. Climate change is one of them. He saw that and was kind of seeing that. But there are other issues that, that are not necessarily seen as vote getters. Homelessness comes to mind. Uh, talk to us about his advocacy for, for, for homeless people. Uh, maybe start with Bob and then to Anne. Well, as you, as you probably remember, that his first book was called Homelessness, and it was really out of the campaigns that he had seen 
activists on the ground in Toronto and in other urban areas in Canada fighting for homeless. And he spent nights sleeping in, in shelters. He spent time going under bridges and talking to people. He was not the politician that kind of read a book and looked at some background notes and made a decision. He was someone who actually went in and tried to understand the people who were affected by it. And I think that was largely one of the reasons why homelessness became uh, one of the crucial areas along with uh, uh, climate change and gay rights. So it was his first book, but then he had the rewrite of that book yeah. when you were there. So it really was a focus of his. It was a huge focus. And, and one of the things that was very important to him was the, the voices of the people who were experiencing this, right? So I remember, you know, he would look at uh, the draft of the speech and he would want to put people's names in it. And, uh, you know, I remember Eugene Upper, for instance, who was a homeless person who died uh, close to uh, Jack and Olivia's place. And he always wanted to talk about Eugene. And he wouldn't let, he wouldn't let people who were experiencing homelessness uh, be nameless, you know, he and, and uh, to the frustration sometimes of people who were trying to work on his speeches. <laughs> Never. <laughs> yep. Never happened. Okay. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but he really wanted people, exactly, but he wanted people to know who, who we were talking about and that they were real people with names and stories and, uh, and, 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 and hopes and dreams as well. Because he truly cared about he, he really. What does that mean for you? What is Jack Layton's legacy? Well, let me just um, go to a personal legacy. I, I met Jack Layton on February 6, 1981. The day before that was when the police raided every gay bathhouse in Toronto. And I and a few others organized a demonstration for Young and Wellesley at 11 o'clock at night. And uh, 11 o'clock at night, the queers tend to like, like night rather than day. So we, we, we did that. Um, and, and I was on a megaphone telling people, we marched down the division, you know, to really kind of send our outrage. And Jacqueline came up to me at the end of that and said, hey, we should get together. And uh, he was a supporter of gay rights from the very beginning. You know, he was a partner all the time. And when in the bath raids, when we needed a phone bank, he organized so we used the secretarial pool of City Hall to get the message out to, to organize the, the resistance to the police at that time. You know, and then he became the board of health, chair of the board of health. And he brought in the very first age strategy for a city in this, in this planet. It, it, was, it was with money, with, with organization, it showed how you had to take it on. This is a decade virtually before the US president would even mention the word AIDS. And it was a, a blueprint that both San Francisco and New York took on uh, uh, from that model. And he did that single-handedly in the middle of the AIDS epidemic. And then 20 years after I had started, it had been, been involved with the battle for gay relationships and then for gay marriage. He and I worked with on our first project at, at, in Ottawa was to make sure that same-sex marriage passed. And it was then, and the pressure we put on Paul Martin, who wouldn't mention the L or G words, uh, to be able to put on, to be able to pass that in 2005. Like, so for me on a personal level, his legacy is an incredible legacy for queer rights. And in that vote, uh, Carl and I were with him in Ireland, actually, at the time when the vote was coming up because the, uh, the um, monument for the victims of Air India was being uh, done in, in. So we did this whirlwind trip to Ireland to do the, uh, the memorial for the Air India um, uh, victims. And many of the survivors were there and so forth. But it was like a 24 hour trip so that we could get back in time for the vote. On, uh, on, on same sex rights. It in, was one in of Parliament. my proudest moments, but it was also one of Jack's proudest moments yeah. in his career. Yeah, it was, it was grueling, and, but he insisted. I mean, really, 
you know, you come back from a trip like that, you would think you'd go take a nap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not Jack. No. Nope. So, you know, I, I remember that very, very well. He was, uh, he was very determined and, and uh, very, very strong on that. The, the other thing in terms of his legacy, though, I think is, is a little bit what Bob was saying at the beginning, and it is the number of people, intergenerational people, who felt inspired by him. Uh, you know, I know there's municipal elections happening in, in, in Ontario right now, and a lot of progressive people are running for, for positions, and I thank them for that. Uh, but a lot of them have been inspired by Jack. I've met people across the country uh, who, uh, who felt like they knew him, you know, and some of them may have, or, and, and, but some of them may not have, but people felt like they knew him. Um, so he had a huge impact on, on people, uh, old, young, uh, people who knew him, people who ran into him, you know, on, on a street corner or that kind of thing. And, you know, I remember in, uh, I think it was 2004, 2005, we went to Quebec and we were in a French immersion uh, uh, week uh, course. And, you know, he was not like, he was not then who he was in 2011, but he had crowds of people all the time. It was impossible, impossible to walk a block with that guy without, you know, I mean, it just took forever. We were late for everything all the time because people <laughs> wanted to stop and talk to him and, and t give, him, give him their opinions and take photos with him and all that, even from the very beginning. So, I, and I've met people like, you know, in, you know, people in city council in Calgary, for instance, who were inspired by his letter um, and who felt like that was, what got, that was what convinced them to run progressive city councillors in, in Calgary. Um, so I, I think he's had a huge impact uh, uh, on, on people who knew him, people who think who maybe think they knew him and on people who just sort of, you know, he kind of, he kind of just, uh, he filled up the space so much, you know, and we saw that when he died, uh, you know, the, the number of people that stood outside parliament to go in uh, for the viewing, the, the number of the, of, of uh, you know, places, cities that, that, that lit, lit up in orange, uh, all of the things that kind of, you know, have, and, and the fact that it's been 11 years and people still, I think people still care, people still want to know about him, uh, and people still want to feel connected to him. Everyone, this was Bob Gallagher and Anne McGrath, Jack Leighton's Chiefs of Staff. Thank you. Thank you, guys.